October 19, 1856. Winter came on, all at once. In the weakened condition of the company, the many river crossings became perilous and seemingly impossible. My betrothed spent the day as the savior would have, helping those in need. I wondered how he could bear it, walking the day through that bitter water. Later, I would wonder how I could be so weak as to allow him to do so. What if we should fall? I would never let you fall. George was not the only one to give so much of himself that day, but he was the only one that I loved so much. Sister Patty, are your children keeping up? Brother Savage, where is the Lord? And where are his servants? We have done all we've been asked to do. Why this? I, I, I do not know the answer. Brother Savage, is help coming? The men are now too weak to put up the tents. Some have never recovered from that last river crossing. Can you hear me, George? You must rest. When we get to Zion, we will be thankful for this trial. These hardships will make us strong. George, stay with me. My dear, you must stay with me. Don't leave me. We've not been sealed. I love you so very much. Thoughts of Sarah. Hast thou a heart, my dearest maid, to freely give away? Nay, do not blush, nor be afraid, the simple truth to say. For love's a power none can withstand, which even death cannot part. But I'd not wish to have thy hand, unless I have thy heart. For all that's mine I give to you, not holding back a part. What else might I do, my darling Sarah, to gather in your heart? Patience, George. Perhaps tomorrow you may wait for us to eat together. <laughs> it is said that other men have seen angels watching from the bluff. I have seen thee, and my darling for me, 
Thou art enough. Bodo Mortensen was assigned to care for Niels as the company staggered through a blizzard all day and late into the night, looking for protection from the storm. She was completely exhausted, but then still had to collect firewood. She endured all that was humanly possible and must have sat down to rest. It would be her final rest. Jens Nielsen collapsed. All Sister Nielsen could do was help him into the handcart and pull him herself. <laughs> when they finally made it to camp that night, they learned their child, Niels, had frozen, and a few hours later was placed in a grave with 12 others. During the night of severe cold, Thirteen of the company perished. The men were weak, but dug a shallow grave. My father held me up to see my playmate, Bodil Mortensen, lying among the dead, as was Niels Nielsen. Even now, more than half a century later, the image still haunts me. In the progress of the journey, it was not difficult to tell who was soon to die. The hollow eyes and sunken countenance with the gradual weakening of the mind plainly foreboded the coming and not far distant dissolution. death came in many ways. Some died lying side by side, with hands entwined showing the last agonies and suffering of life with a final gasp of love and affection. Some had just offered a fervent prayer, and their spirit taken flight while doing so. Some were singing hymns. Others, while eating crusts of bread, Some, like Albert, began the journey with so little of life's mercies. The fact that he survived for even 300 miles was a miracle. I always wanted a strong body. Now I'm going to get it. When you get to Zion, think of me. You know something, Albert? You are superb. Many of those whose spirits were about to leave us left us with profound words. It will all be worth it if my posterity will keep the faith. Tell me, son, I died with me face towards Zion. I watched men dig graves for their brethren and before the day was finished, lie themselves in the very grave they had dug.
No person can describe it. It cannot be comprehended or understood by any human in this life, but only by those who were called to pass through it. All I ever wanted is to do God's will and be with my son. I have asked God for this over and over. Of the 500 members of the company, death has now claimed 65. <laughs> 